I want to talk about Alphabet. So Alphabet cut 12,000 jobs after pandemic hiring spree, and it's going to refocus on AI. Why is this a good thing or why is this super bullish on for stocks? Well, usually when companies lay off a lot of workers, their costs go down, especially a tech company like Google, where they make a lot of speculative bets on technology. Overall, Google cut a bunch of jobs. This was very bullish for the stock. If you take a look at the weekly chart or the actual year-long chart on Google, it's had quite a decline from $140 down to about you know 88 at its low before it got its bounce. This is why I picked the trade on Friday. Google gapped up a little bit. It was obviously pretty bullish on the news. By gap up, you can kind of see this was like the day before close. This is the day of open. Um, on the 20th, the day I was trading. So you can kind of see that right here. I decided to take my largest sizing trade-wise on Google because I thought it was the closest thing to a sure bet. But obviously, I wait until the charts kind of confirm what my suspicions are. We see this huge resistance area right around 96.50. I was kind of waiting for a clean break above that. Yeah, so I took a few other trades. I took Netflix. I thought this was a good spot to buy into the dip that had occurred um, right at the open, took a, third, a really small share size. I was scared that Netflix would get blown out. The reason I brought up Netflix was mainly because I didn't want to take huge size on Netflix because it had gapped up so much already on earnings. Um, so Google was one of my main targets because it hadn't gapped up. Google's only up about two points uh, for the major news related trades of the day. Bam, right there. I'm in for, not, uh, for 500 shares. It's a tremendously larger size than my Netflix trade, obviously. Like I'm, I'm already feeling a little bit nervous. Maybe it's not going to be able to break this, uh, the top of this red bar right here, but then it, it quickly breaks above that. As Google's rallying, I'm already planning on trying to take off 200 shares. Google's already significantly larger than my other trades like Nvidia and you know Netflix in terms of size. Plus we hit some resistance right around 97, which is why I took off 200 shares. Uh, I want to see a strong break above this. As it continues to rally, I decide just to take the rest of it off. If you look at the level twos, the way it's just dancing right here, I'm not really that super comfortable with the trade at this point of time. So I just take off the rest of it. It has an all day rally. I missed out on a lot of gains here uh, because of the all day rally. Y you guys might be asking, hey, why did I take it off so fast? I keep bringing this up, and this was a topic of my first video. Look at these wick backs, and this is what I'm talking about, which is why it's very hard to stay in with full size in the market. You sell, you see Nvidia kind of wick here on the way, then it's another change of direction, and then another change of direction. This is a common theme right now in the market, and which is why I've been basically forced to play it very coy with very small size right now because it's very rare to see a stock do what Google did on Friday, which is kind of just like a continuous run higher. With the way the market has been behaving and price action, it's really hard to go in with convin convincing size. Look at NVIDIA right now. Just focus on the NVIDIA chart. I don't want that to be happening to Google uh, while I'm in the position. Out of nowhere, it goes from about $169.90, and we just have this run up. Before you can really act, it's basically back above a level, and now you're not sure whether to be bullish or bearish. Tesla was actually at a point where I was potentially ready to grab a short, but then it did this wick back maneuver too. And then Google obviously rode this, um, this wave of buying in the S&P. Um, as well. Um, but it, it was just unfortunate uh, for me that I wasn't in and I had sold uh, most of my uh, Google. That's not what this channel is about. And that's not, I'm not going to reminisce, oh, I should have uh, kept in on Google. Realistically, the easy trade was done uh, right around 97.20, 97.30, uh, around there. At this point in time, it's anyone's guess whether a wick back is going to happen or not. And it's not necessarily a high probability trade. Uh, hence why um, I, I let go. It, if if I ever take 500 shares in size, I think in the future, I should have just left, left 100 shares to just ride out and see what happens. But um, 
All too often, I've just been caught up in these wickbacks and they just get annoying. So we saw right here, uh, we had a quick drop from $98.50 to $98.15, kind of washed out a little bit here. And then right around $97.96, I took another position of 250 shares. And the reason I took this second trade on Google, you can kind of see it right here, is mainly because, hey, it washed out a bit. And usually when a stock is as bullish as Google was on this day, when it washes out, it'll be followed up by a few buyers. A lot of people make the mistake of shorting uh, Google right here. I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, the change of direction is going to be very rare when the stocks already rallied so much. Um, it's better just to get long. Obviously, I went in with half size just to control um, uh, control size. I, uh, it, mainly because I, the first time I went in with 500 shares because it was an easier, higher probability trade. At this point in time, there is a possibility it could have dropped below $97.80. Um, so I just chose to go in with uh, half the size just to adjust uh, for the fact that this was less probable of a trade than my first initial entry into Google. I'm out of the Google trade. I'm pretty happy with it overall, although it continued to run. I felt like I picked the good spots to get in on the Google trade. In earlier years, I would have maybe held Google this whole time, you know, dealt with any wickbacks. Nowadays, I'm trying to get out, uh, get back in and try to find better spots for higher probability trades. And that's kind of what I want to show on this channel, my journey to kind of completely revamping uh, that trading style into a much more nimble style. I, I wanted to show you guys a major loss that I had this week. I'm, you know, that's essentially what my channel is known for, for uh, me being uh, very candid with my losses. I have nothing to report this week. Hopefully I have, uh, I have a very red day next week uh, and I can show you guys, uh, you know, a, a major blow up or a loss that I've taken. Uh, nothing really to report uh, much on this week. Wanted to get this out. Remember, um, uh, basically losing a lot of employees or firing a lot of employees. It sucks when you're the employee of that company, but it's very great for us if you're trying to trade on the long side for that company. It's usually uh, uh, leads to good, easy setups. And uh, Google, honestly, my only regret was not going in with even more size, um, mainly because I'm playing it scared right now. Anyway, that's it for me for this week. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video and uh, hopefully get another trading video out shortly. I just want the money.